Karan, tell me, uh, why do you make guitars? Mm, keeps me away from the corporate space. <laughs> okay. No, I, I enjoy working with my hands. I enjoy working alone. And I love working with wood. And I love the guitar. Right, it's, a, it's something that is extremely personal. It's something that's extremely, I think, uh, emotional in the sense that it provokes a lot of emotion. Um, when I think back on it through my angst-ridden, you know, college onwards, till mid-twenties, kind of those years, I think the guitar was the one thing that kept me sane in many ways. I was never a musician in that sense. I would hold my three chords and strum and you know sing a couple of songs to myself, which was fine. I, uh, I enjoyed it. And whenever I would have a tough time or whenever I needed some, you know, just get my mind off of whatever was on it, the guitar would be my go-to thing. So I think the ability to try and create that and share it is something that excites me and it's something that I enjoy doing man there's a certain sound I'm after and I with each passing year I find myself getting closer and closer to reaching that because it's here it's in my head um, and it's very tough to express that in any other way apart from building a guitar that sounds the way I want it to sound and there are certain things that I'm trying to chase in order to make that instrument a more valuable addition to your toolkit as a musician, right? It is a tool at the end of the day. And my job is done when you pick up that instrument and you feel like you don't need to spend three months learning how to play the guitar because each guitar is different. It's got its own character. And a lot of times musicians spend a fair bit of um, you know, man hours trying to understand the guitar first with each new one. So my idea is that it should feel like an extension of your own body when you pick it up. When you play it, I want you to experience the way it vibrates. I want you to really get immersed in what's coming out of that instrument. Absolutely. There are a couple that I have played that have blown my socks off. Um, the sound that I try, you know, that's closest to what's in my head is, uh, you know, based on the kind of instruments my mentor makes. His name is Jason Costu. He's based in Phoenix, Arizona, and he's one of the most renowned luthiers in the world today. His instrument, I think the first time I played it was at a show in Berlin in 2016. My wife and I had gone down. It was the first guitar show that I participated in. And uh, that's where I met him as well for the first time. And I went, asked him if I could, you know, touch his guitars because they're super expensive and they're just, you know, they're like works of art. So it's a bit scary just going up there and even putting your hands on it. And I ended up, uh, I think I remember I played an E chord, just an E chord. And I was wearing full sleeve shirt, a full sleeve shirt. I rolled up my sleeves and I showed my wife and I had goosebumps all over my arms. And I was, that was one chord, literally. I, it wasn't a song that I was playing. This is in a hall where there's like 150 tables exhibiting their instruments, right? And through that entire thing, this happened. So it was a bit of a what the hell moment for me, <laughs> you know? Uh, thinking about it and going, this shouldn't be possible. Like an instrument should not be able to do this. It's great that it does. But now that I've heard this, or now that I've experienced <laughs> that, nothing else is going to be good enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then suddenly it starts making sense. And then as you build more and more, you realize just how much goes into making that happen. That's all. Tell me something. What do you think is like, you've been doing this for a while now. You've met other luthiers. Yeah. What is the luthier mindset? Patience, definitely. I think the ability to really focus and then focus some more. And when you think you've hit that peak of your focus, then step it up a few more notches. Number three, the ability to step back and take a look at the bigger picture of what's going on. Right? It's important to 
get your hands dirty do what you need to do but you know you'll be juggling between that and taking a step back to see how it's all fitting together literally and figuratively right i think uh, not being easily satisfied is one thing that's going to take you from being decent at what you're doing to being really good right there's this perpetual hunger in order to want to do better or do more or step it up with every single guitar tell me like your first guitar yeah. that you built i learned that i needed a teacher <laughs> <laughs> well when i started my first uh, guitar i think it was a it was based on a martin dreadnought shape right and so in the rose wood back and sides and a spruce top I also had zero woodworking knowledge at the time so the entire process I think took me almost 7 or 8 months but I had to build a number of fixtures for it I had to learn how to use hand planes how to use saws how to use chisels and that took a fair bit of time I put the guitar together it's playable and it sounds fairly good actually um doesn't sound anything like what I make now in terms of the tonal uh, response but perfectly playable instrument things that were a lot more challenging than i initially anticipated was after the construction like when you get to the finishing stages how to make that guitar look beautiful how to make everything smooth and perfect and those aspects really took a while so i went through this instrument and got done and then i i think about a year after i built it i went back to it and stripped the finish redid the entire prep work for the finish and then did it from scratch all over again now it looks like a proper guitar how long does it take you on average to build a guitar i work in batches i do a batch of about 3 or 4 guitars at a time and each batch is about a quarter so about 3 months what is it about the luthier community that makes them Uh, engage with each other and be so open do you f- are there other communities that you found the sort of openness or do you think that luthiers are different i th- i mean it's just my opinion but i i feel like it's this time that they spend alone or all of us we just work by ourselves we don't really focus on who's going to steal what idea for the most part right as long as it's not blatant plagiarism where someone's making a you know step by step replica of my instrument i am perfectly happy having conversations with folks telling them how i do things why i do things what i'm trying to achieve and i've had that feedback as well right this whole concept of handmade high end premium you know super quality guitars it's something that hasn't existed It's always been tell my uncle to bring a Martin from abroad or tell my uncle to pick up a Les Paul or my brother's flying down from somewhere so pick up some fancy guitar from there and bring it down right but when you look at it we don't have boutique stores in India you can't walk into any shop in your city and try out something that's really superb right or something that's really different from the factory made instruments and i think all of that has to work in conjunction like it has to work together for this market to develop how has it been living in the goan community for you as a creator i have actually really enjoyed the last year and a half that i've been here well there has been a significant amount of that time period that we were under lockdown as was the rest of the country um but having said that i think i really am happy here I find that peaceful all the local visitors that I have had have been nothing but wonderful and uh, extremely warm and inviting I've had people come in here and literally everyone who's even brought in a guitar for repair has come in and invited me over to their home for a meal or you know offered to take me out or something of the sort and they are regular clients i've been doing this for a decade in delhi no one not one human being except for my friends who brought their guitars not a single human being has ever offered saying please come over and eat dinner with me you know after this so i think it's it's a nice um 
there is definitely a stronger sense of community here. You can start with a book. I started with a book when I began. In retrospect, if I had the option of attending a course somewhere in India back then, I would have taken that. Or I should have taken that. Right? While it's great to be self-taught, I think the amount of patience and perseverance you need to get through that is very, very high compared to going to a workshop, asking questions. You've, when you're starting out, there's like a million things going through your mind, you know, and it's so, so much more helpful when you've got someone there to have to answer those questions for you, right? Or to say, all right, this is looking fine. You can stop here. I need to sand. How much do I sand? When do I know I'm done sanding? It never ends. But to have some kind of a you know a guide, that that I think is uh, definitely the best option. I think uh, I mean, there's nothing particularly profound, but maybe just two points. One is don't be afraid of making mistakes. It's going to happen whether you're afraid of it or not. And the second thing, don't be afraid of working. You know, there is what you think is hard work and then there is hard work, right? So don't be afraid of actual hard work. A lot of the, the current generation of youngsters, I find that they're hesitant. That level where it's like, I've had enough, comes in way too early. You, know, you want to get good at something, if folks have spent 20 years trying to understand the basics of what goes on inside the guitar, you're not going to learn it in a week or three months. Right? But that patience has to be there. Yeah? Your willingness to give it some time. That's about it. Hey everyone, so that was uh, the episode with Karan from Bigfoot Guitars. Actually, I forgot to ask you, why do you actually call it Bigfoot Guitars? Uh, <laughs> prior to Getting into guitars, my first, you know, job, so to speak, was straight out of college, was in the field of adventure tourism. Okay. And it took me to Tibet and Nepal, and I spent a bit of quite a bit of time there. And I developed this fascination for the Yeti. All right. And uh, it just kind of came about from there. I've always been a sucker for myths and, <laughs> you know, folklore, <laughs> folklore and urban legends and things like that. And that's what uh, I think eventually led to Bigfoot coming uh, about. I was I was looking at I was wondering what I was also Bigfoot, like, but yeah. that's not why it happened. <laughs> Interesting because when I saw it, I was like, oh, Bigfoot guitars. I wonder whether it's got to do with the Yeti and like. I was like, okay, maybe he's actually seen one. No, I wish. <laughs> if I had, I wouldn't be back here building guitars. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be writing my autobiography and uh, bestseller on New York yeah, Times. Or, or, or you would have been in his stomach. <laughs> anyway guys uh, that's Karan from Bigfoot Guitars he's a luthier in Goa and builds some amazing world class guitars that are played by uh, some pretty fancy names as you've heard uh, he's been kind enough to invite us into his workspace we hope you've enjoyed that conversation with Karan and we hope to do more of these conversations with makers here in Goa who are building some amazing things thank you for watching as always Wherever you are, whatever you do, always get creative. See you later.